Well, good afternoon. Thank you for your time. Uh, what I'd like to do is um, read uh, into the record the statement that I've put out. And um, from my perspective, I don't think I can add too much to that. But after that, simply answer any questions you have or endeavour to anyway. Uh, today I was issued with a traffic infringement notice for exceeding the speed limit of 60 kilometres an hour by 10 kilometres an hour when travelling at 70 kilometres an hour on Main Street Kangaroo Point at 8.25pm on Friday the 3rd of February 2012. At the time I was driving my contract based service vehicle and was travelling to police headquarters in relation to service related matters. Uh, I accept responsibility for this infringement and today have paid the traffic infringement notice which is a fine of $133 uh, and one demerit point off my driver's licence record. I was aware that the section of roadway was a 60 kilometre an hour zone but was not consciously or deliberately uh, aware of exceeding the speed limit at the time. And whilst it is no excuse, I can only attribute this breach on my part to a lapse of concentration at the time. Uh, the detection was from a fixed speed camera and uh, whilst not specifically aware of where it was, I was aware that it, there was one in that general area. Um, I sincerely regret this occurrence and I apologise to my colleagues in the Queensland Police Service and the broader community. I also acknowledge the support of the media to myself and the Queensland Police Service in our combined efforts um, to reduce the road toll and might I say that's one point that um, I'm particularly disappointed in myself about, that um, the police department and myself personally have had wonderful support from the media in terms of this very worth, worthwhile area and uh, uh, again that's uh, regrettable. The most important issue for me though is that all of our efforts, mine and many, many others, um, that that work in relation to endeavouring to reduce the road toll continues unabated and despite this breach, I am and I remain genuinely committed uh, to reducing the road toll and I hope to obviously stay involved in that area even after I retire uh, ultimately from the Queensland Police Service. That in essence is the statement that I've put out both internally and publicly and uh, as I said, I'll endeavour to take any questions you have. Commissioner, did you see the camera flash at all or did it just come as a surprise when you got the, got the ticket in the mail? No, um, I didn't see the camera flash. I had no awareness whatsoever uh, of this um, and uh, um, uh, it, it was brought to my notice that there might be an issue last Friday uh, but that further inquiries would have to be made this week, which they were. Uh, yesterday those inquiries established that my vehicle uh, had in fact um, driven you know, uh, through the um, speed camera at a speed of 70 in the 60 zone and um, the matter was handled internally by the Deputy Commissioner or Deputy Commissioner Ian Stewart. Uh, he asked me yesterday if I had been the driver at the time, which I had, um, so subsequently the processing of this matter continued. Late yesterday afternoon I was advised that a traffic infringement notice would be issued in all probability this morning, uh, which it was. Uh, and when it was issued, um, I comprised the statement that I've just read out to you and, and paid the ticket as well. Did you receive the first traffic infringement notice that you've No. Yes, certainly. Um, I received one in 1998, which was the year speed cameras came in, when I was the Assistant Commissioner in Far North Queensland, based at Cairns. Um, I received one in 2004. Uh, which wasn't for speeding, that was for following too closely. I can explain that further if you wish. I received one in 2009 while I was on holidays in New South Wales um, in terms of a similar uh, type of speed. Uh, this is the only speeding ticket that I have received in Queensland in the 11 years and three months that I've been the Police Commissioner. Would you say you've got a good driving record? Um, I'd say it could be better. Um, it, it, it's not perfect. Um, but um, I will say to you, and I want to be really careful here that under no circumstances do I want you to think that in any way I'm making excuses. Um, but on every occasion, um, and particularly this last occasion, uh, I have not consciously, deliberately, intentionally ever been speeding. Uh, it's been circumstances where um, I've either been in a zone, and as the one was in Cairns, where I thought the speed limit 
was a certain speed limit and was wrong. Um, but I give you an assurance that I have not consciously, intentionally or deliberately uh, exceeded the speed limit or broken the traffic regulations at any time. Do you think this sets a bad example for the rest of us if you as a police commissioner is speeding? Uh, I hope that people will be understanding uh, in terms of that space uh, that this is human error on my part and wasn't deliberate or intentional. I recognise though, and I'm very acutely aware of the fact, that I am in a fortunate and privileged position. Uh, and that when I talk about the importance of not speeding, I genuinely believe that and believe in it. Um, and that there is an expe expectation of me, uh, and so there should be, that's higher uh, than it would be for others. So um, uh, I can only repeat that I would ask for people's uh, acceptance that this was a genuine mistake and wasn't intentional or deliberate. Commissioner, I don't know if anyone's asked this, but have you been embarrassed that this has happened? Oh, enormously so. Yeah, yeah. and that, that goes with the aspect of being in this fortunate and quite privileged position to represent the 15,000 people in the Queensland Police Service and to have the support of the media, particularly in terms of getting the road safety message out. So I feel as though I've let you down, I feel as though I've let my colleagues down, I feel as though I've let the community down. Uh, but that's happened, I can't go back and change that now as much as I'd like to, of course. You'd be left to front up to the media conference after they've had a 10 kilometre an hour speeding ticket though? Yes, look, um, uh, and I'm not a hypocrite and can I say to you that I have said in the past that it requires concentration when you're driving and I have said in the past that with modern motor vehicles it's very easy to go from 60 to 70, that can happen momentarily. Uh, but I've also said in the past that, that you know you need to concentrate on your driving and that we as a broader community, and I still believe this, need to change our driving habits. Um, and we're a long way away from doing that, but I think that that change hopefully will occur into the future. And by, what I mean by that is we need to be in a space, and I haven't set a very good example of this obviously on this case, but we need to be in a space where we see the maximum speed limits as the maximum speed limits, so that if, is, if it is a 60 speed limit, if we're doing 58 or 59, we need to be thinking, well, you know, I'm getting close to the maximum speed limit. I think it's probably true to say, though, that that isn't the case in our contemporary society, and um, uh, and that's where I think the improvement needs to um, go to into the future. Is this the sort of press conference you've sort of dreaded all day, having to prepare to come and do this? Uh, um, obvious, it is uh, in a sense. Look, look, the worst the the worst thing that can happen for me as the police commissioner is when one of my people is killed or badly injured. Um, that's, that's your nightmare, you know, that that, that happens. And, and sadly, given the dangerous work of policing, that does happen from time to time. So I want to keep this in perspective as well. But um, it, it's always been a fear of mine that, um, that this could happen one day. Um, uh, uh, you know, I mean, I'm, I have hands free, but I'm on the phone a lot when I drive. And again, I'm not, I don't recall if I was on the phone at the time. It wouldn't matter if I was or I wasn't. It's still no excuse, of course. Um, but it, it is something that, that I've been mindful of and concerned about that, that uh, one day that could happen and of course now it has happened. You know. Does this make the, the road toll message harder for you to sell? Will you pull back and leave that to, to someone else with I guess a, an unblemished driving record? Uh, look, I would hope not. Um, my commitment remains uh, absolute and, and I can assure you is genuine and sincere. Um, I, I hope that people will accept that I am genuine and sincere about that and that what has happened here is that I've made a mistake, uh, an unintentional um, mistake, but nonetheless a mistake. Uh, I've um, done two things. I've, I've paid the fine and I have um, told you about it, you know, which I believe I should have. I don't, there's nothing special in my doing that in either count. You know, I mean, uh, I've got no excuse um, and uh, so I should pay the fine. Uh, and given, again, the fortunate position that I have and privileged position that I have, um, you've got to take the, the bad with the good and, and it was right and proper to, to go public about it. It certainly doesn't give me any joy. But um, coming back to your specific question, I would hope not and I would hope that people... Um, will, because I want to continue uh, personally to support this cause. I want the police department, and I believe we will, absolutely support this cause. It, it's a really important one. And the significant thing about it is it's an area where we can make change and we have seen change occur. And I think that change is evolutionary and I think it continued to get... We, we can still do better than, than where we are at the moment. And where we were, not last year, but the year before in 2010, was quite remarkable for a state our size in terms of the road toll. Do you, do you feel sorry for 
I feel like it's people in the past day or day or two that have been pulled over and, and had been told by police officers that uh, inattention and not concentrate is no excuse for speeding? Um, I, I, I think that that is, uh, that goes with the territory for all of us. Uh, we have rules, we have laws. Um, and uh, I think uh, that we have reasonable tolerances in Queensland in terms, I think, um, the enforcement of our traffic regulations is done with a sense of balance and fairness and reasonable tolerance. Um, so um, it's not, I guess, appropriate then uh, to say that we feel sorry for people. Um, we're clear in our messaging. Uh, we say, and I have said, that we should stick to the speed limits. We say, and I have said, that excessive speed puts you at greater risk of being involved in a traffic crash. Uh, I believe those things to be true, so I can't retreat from them now. Do you usually have a driver? Uh, quite often, yeah. yeah I, I, I'm, this was um, uh, probably a slightly unusual day, um, and um, on this particular day I, uh, I didn't. Uh, there was someone else with me in the vehicle, um, but um, uh, perhaps I should explain that. Uh, we'd been at Kedron. Um, and I was giving, I wanted to return to headquarters. I'd started my day in Cairns that day. Um, and uh, of course, as you recall, that was the time when the floodwaters were heading towards St George and it was over that weekend that, I, from memory, the evacuation order was given. Um, I wanted to come back to headquarters. I was giving a lift to uh, a senior sergeant. He wanted to go back to headquarters as well. Uh, I was going to go on the inner city bypass, but it was blocked off. So as a result, you can't turn around there, so I ended up in the uh, Clem 7, took the East Brisbane exit, came back around and ended up, of course, on the Story Bridge. So I perhaps should explain to you what I was doing in Main Street, Kangaroo Point, whilst travelling from Kedron to Brisbane, to he headquarters here. Can you explain just briefly the, the 2004 following too closely? Yes, that was a minor traffic accident. I bumped into the back of a vehicle in front of me. Um, it, it, it uh, was one where, because I was driving a police car, uh, police vehicle, has to be reported under our rules. Uh, it was adjudicated. The adjudication was that I'd been following the other car too closely. I was given a ticket for that and I paid the ticket. Speaking of the case that you had a lot on your mind, um, um, September, Friday just gone before the Friday before? Oh, that's possible, but again, that's no excuse. Um, lots of people have things on their mind when they're driving vehicles, and one of the points I make over and over again is that when you're driving, you should concentrate on your driving, you know, uh, and that should be primary in, 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 uh, in your thinking, you know, and, and that's true, it is, you know. Uh, so uh, it may well have been the case that I was um, thinking about other things and that's quite possible, but again, there's no excuse. Commissioner, whether you're on the phone or not, could you see a day in Queensland where um, hands-free phone may not be allowed just because you, you are concentrating when you're on the phone, whether you're on hands-free or not? Mm. You can't really you know, for what it's worth, I think that's a really good question. And um, I, look, I don't know what the research says on that. Uh, I know that sometimes I leave here at night uh, and I go home, uh, and it's about a half hour an hour drive. I live on the south side, uh, and I'm on the phone from the moment I leave here to the moment I get home. Um, and um, sometimes I wonder about that myself, that, that uh, e is even hands-free um, justifiable? Um, in terms of driving and does using a hands-free phone impair at all uh, your driving concentration? The jury's still out on that, uh, but it may well be that into the future there is, a, at the moment, it's quite legal to do that. And certainly for many of us, and certainly myself, it's an incredibly valuable use of your time, you know. Uh, but um, it may well be that at some time in the future research indicates that even hands-free uh, does... Um, Re reduce your driving concentration and, and uh, legislators then would have decisions to make uh, in that space. Because you can get to the other end and not really know what you saw in the last half an hour. Is that what you're saying? Uh, well, no, they're your words, not mine. All I'm saying is that, that for many of us, you know, hands-free mobile phone is a wonderful use of time and it enables you, you know, to, um, to use your phone while you're driving. Um, and in my case, I'm often getting calls and, you know, um, being briefed on things and and uh, that aspect is relevant. All I'm saying is that, um, to my understanding, and I might be corrected on this, but to my understanding there is no definitive research uh, that says that using hands-free mobile phone impairs your driving, but that if that, if in the future there is research that proves that beyond any shadow of a doubt, then that would be a matter for our legislators to decide as to whether they would ban 
um, hands for any mobile phone use in a vehicle. What's the cost of a car do you drive? Uh, it's a um, Holden Statesman. Uh, no, it's a six. Yeah. Are you aware of your, uh, where you stand points-wise? Are you not in any danger of... Uh... No, I've got one point, which is the point I've got today. That's it? Though. Yeah. Mr. a lot of people might say 10 kilometres over the speed limit isn't that much, it's only human. Do you want people to say that or do you want them to realise that it's, it's a serious... Uh, no, I don't. No, I want them to, um, as, as um, strange as it might sound in my circumstances, what I want people to do is to drive to the speed limits. I want, what I would like to see is ultimately over time that we change our driving behaviours, but I truly think that's years away. Um, um, what I would like to see is a situation where people truly drive to the speed limit and we don't have that bit of give and take that we seem to have now. Uh, and that's just not for me on this occasion, but that's generally. Um, uh, so I think we're a way away from that. But, but why I believe in this is, if I, can I just explain to you why, why I think this is so important? And that is this, speed cameras came in in 1998. And in 1997, the road toll in Queensland was 360. In 1998, the year speed cameras came in, it was 279, so it was 81 less than it was in 1997. Um, in 2010, we introduced covert speed cameras. Um, and in 2009, the road toll was 330. And in 2010, it was 249. Again, 81 less than it was the year before. Now, you look at that and you think, why? How could that be? And the only possible reason would be, in my view, because in 1998, most people slowed down because of the introduction of speed cameras. And in 2010, people, I think, again slowed down because we brought in covert or undercover-type police mobile speed cameras. Um, because you just can't have those sort of reductions, you know, without there being some reason. So to me, the message that sends is we all slowed down, you know, and stuck to the speed limits, then the road toll would reduce. Um, and, uh, yeah, that, that's... My answer to that is um, um, I have made a mistake here. Um, I acknowledge that. I deeply regret it, um, and um, my point, as I mentioned earlier, it wasn't done deliberately, intentionally, or knowingly, um, but I should have been concentrating better, and um, I um, accept that. Commissioner, I guess separate but related issue, this is obviously a traffic incident that the police have taken action in immediately, and there's been quite a public um, expose, I suppose, of it. We ran a story yesterday of an incident in Woodridge three weeks ago, where a truck and a car were involved in a, a road raid incident, I suppose, and the trucks clearly visible banging into this particular car three or so times. Uh, that video uh, and the information with the statement has been handed to the police and there's been nothing happened in that three week period. Uh, is it slightly hypocritical I guess that something happens immediately today and yet such a major incident you know which a car's been total, lives put at risk, mm. nothing's happened? Can I come back to you with more detail on that but my, f my understanding of that and I don't have a, 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 a comprehensive knowledge of that matter is that it may well be um, that identification is the current issue there. Um, obviously, we believe we know who the owner of that vehicle is, uh, but that's not enough, uh, and that matter is under investigation, and it may well be that identification is the issue there. So I wouldn't want you to think that nothing happened and isn't being done, but obviously we must work in within the boundaries of what we're able to do. But can I come back to you with more detail on that? Yeah, but I, at this stage, the issue is who is driving the car. Is that perhaps the, the hold-up in... Well, uh, yeah, that's, that was my point. Thank you. I, that, that, that matter is being investigated. Um, we believe we know who the owner of that vehicle is. That's not the critical point, though. The critical point is who was the driver and then being able to identify that person. And, and it's my understanding that that may be the difficulty, but I'd like to confirm that and if I could come back to you afterwards on that. Yeah. And, and uh, if, can I say to you that our processing in terms of these matters has speeded up? And my understanding is that other people who would have got speed camera infringements around the same time as I did are also receiving their tickets in the next day or so as well. OK, was there any other matter that anyone would like to raise? Uh, thank you for being here today. Um, and if there is any follow-up matter, uh, please uh, contact Police Media.